my broadcast. Dr. Rowe, do you see the invitation coming through? Let us know. Oh, there's a connection. <laughs> Dr. Rowe is in the house. The, the author of Lose Your Final 15 has joined us in Facebook Live to talk what the hell. And I'm excited. Can everybody say hello, Dr. Rowe? Everybody <laughs> greet Dr. Dr. Rowe, first of all, you look pretty. Oh, I was on the news today. Um, and I know you got all done up for the news. Um, and it's like 10 hours later. So you're just pretty in the evening too, Dr. Rowe. Thank you. And Dr. Rowe, okay, before we get to what the hell, I got a couple questions. Because Dr. Rowe was on Good Day DC on W uh, TTG Fox 5 in DC this morning. And yeah. the thing that she did that was really, really cool was um, she was talking about like some food hacks, like ways you can preserve food, use food for different things. Um, so, Dr. Rowe, you were talking about the blueberries. And, you know, I'm a, I'm a big blueberry guy. I, I, I like blueberries in my cereal. Um, and um, for one of my healthy desserts that you told me was really good, yeah. uh, I like my sliced peaches and blueberries um, with just a little drizzle of natural honey on top. So you said to preserve my blueberries, I should put them in a bath of water and white vinegar. And white vinegar, yeah. The white vinegar. Now, do you do... The white vinegar retards the um, retards the um, the deterioration process. So as it keeps them from going from being spoiled sooner, so it delays that process. Now you 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 just do a bath of it, and then you just leave the blueberries dry. That's the part I wanted to ask the TV today when you were on it. Or do you keep them in that bath for a long going uh, like an ongoing period of time? Well, you keep them in there for about 20 minutes, and then... Okay, okay. Yeah, and then you take them out. Yeah, so you're kind of shocking. You're shocking your berries. So blueberries, blackberries, strawberries, all of them, which go bad really quickly, and, it's, and even if you get them organic. So the point is, yeah, you just do that for about 20 minutes. Leave them in the bath for about 20 minutes, and then dry them and store them. So, Dr. Rowe, I was snacking early. I told them you might... I don't know what you would say about these. So I have these... Um, Panera bread, kettle corn, potato chips. Mm. Um, they're 150 calories, but it's a small bag. Uh huh. Really tasty. They go really good with the salad that I'm gonna have once I get off air. But I just was wondering what you thought about my kettle corn potato chips. So how much fat? I would say to you, look at the fat and look at the sodium in the potato chips because typically a bag of potato chips are going to be pretty high in sodium, and they're also going to have an enormous amount of fat. So the calories of fat is 70. So and 70 calories per, per serving. And then what's the, what's the fat? Is it 70? Oh, you're saying the calories from the gram. How many grams of fat? How many grams of fat? Total yeah. grams of fat, eight grams. Okay. Not bad. And it's not bad for an occasional thing. And zero, zero trans fat. Because, you know, Panera bread is all about trying to be healthy. So they're, you know, they're not trying to set you back too far. Yeah. Well... Yeah, so I could do Panera Bread up to a point, but it's not an everyday venture. You know what I'm saying? I got you. Yeah. Um. Oh, okay, one more question about the blueberries, Dr. Rowe. After I shock them, is it best to store them in the refrigerator or to leave them out, like, on the counter? No, you're going to store them in the refrigerator because if you leave them out, they're really going to go quickly. They're going to... Okay, so the yeah. refrigerator. Yeah. All right, cool. So I just got to start shock, electro electroshock therapy. For my berries when I buy them. Okay, or, or at least vinegar shock there. <laughs> so, Dr. Rowe, we were talking the other day and uh, we just, you know, having a good catch up call. And on that call, I, I mentioned that so many people are obsessed with this Netflix documentary, What the Hell? And you said, Yeah, that documentary makes me go, What the hell? Exactly. I said, so Dr. Rowe, is there something wrong with the documentary? And you begin to share with me, and I said, we have to do this for the people. Because if I had a dollar for every time I saw somebody post on social media, and I'm talking fitness buffs, I'm talking about um, pseudo-nutritionists, I'm talking about people who, you know, are educated people. They're watching this documentary, and it's scaring them half to death. You know, I personally didn't watch it because, um, you know, I'm a country boy, and there's an old country saying that says, if you like hot dogs, don't go to the place to where they make them because you'll never want to eat one again. And I'm a foodie, so I didn't want to see anything that wasn't going to make me eat food. So right. I was already like, yeah, I'm good on that one. But but now that I know that you've watched it and you have trouble with it, I said we had to have this conversation today. So so tell me, 
what type of an impact did what the hell have on you when you watched it? First, about the hot dogs, not going to the place where they, where they make them. Um, I did that to, to Anderson Cooper once on television, live, and she I saw that what was in a hot dog. And I can't tell you the number of people who watched that show who decided they would never eat a hot dog again. And he almost threw up. That's a whole other thing. So, <laughs> well, for what the health, like I said to you, John, um, what the health makes me feel like, what the hell? And because <laughs> what the health is really um, about a vegan agenda. And listen, there's nobody that wants you to eat, you know, copious amount of fruits and vegetables. I always, I'm recommending fruits and vegetables every day. I want you to put more fruits and vegetables in your diet on a daily basis. But you do not have to be vegan to be healthy. That's the point. And then there's some gross inaccuracies um, in what the hell. We can talk about them. I could give you like about three really quick examples. Well, let, let's start with the one, I mean, you know, while I, while I have a diverse audience, predominantly here in my Facebook Live for Let's Talk Live, uh, you know, it's a predominant African-American audience. And what do African-Americans love more than anything? Chicken. Yeah. So tell me your thoughts on how What the Health deals with our favorite meat, chicken. So What the Health supposes or, or, or purports that um, chicken causes diabetes, which is the biggest fallacy I've ever heard. You know, um, they talk fake about, news, fake news. It is fake news. And I would never use a term that Orangina uses, but I'm just saying um, <laughs> that happens to be apropos right here. It, it fits. And they also say that chicken has more cholesterol than beef. So here's the thing. And so they say that chicken causes uh, diabetes. They say it causes heart disease. Here's the deal. You know, cholesterol, dietary cholesterol does not, give you a heart attack. It doesn't cause that heart, heart disease. There's one scene in the film where um, the, you, you did this when you did air quotes, when you talked about pseudo nutritionist. So I'm gonna call this guy pseudo reporter, who's really, go, he call, calls himself a reporter or he's the person telling a story. And in this particular scene, he supposedly causes, calls the American Heart Association and probably gets a janitor or a receptionist, just some, some random person. <laughs> That is not a or, or or a hired actor pretending to be at the American Heart Association. Okay, that could be, but who's but the reason I I contend that it's probably not a hired actor because the guy says, "Listen, that's not my job. I don't even know what you're talking about." In other words, his point is, I just answer the phone here. You see what I'm saying? <laughs> and so now they say, "Oh, now you see, this is the American Heart Association's position, and they don't even know why they would recommend this." This is crazy. What I'm saying to you is what the health has a whole lot of crazy talk in it, okay? And so chicken does not cause heart disease because of dietary cholesterol because it's already been proven that dietary cholesterol is not the thing that raises blood cholesterol levels. It's saturated fat and trans fats. So if you want to talk about that, let's go. But you can't attribute chicken and its cholesterol, its dietary cholesterol content causing heart disease and diabetes. That's ridiculous. Now, Dr. Rowe, you're, you're, Dr. Rowe is your nickname, but you're not just a doctor on TV. You are one in, in real life. Before you signed on today, I was telling them your full name is Rovinia M. Brock, and you actually have a PhD. And before you were doing television and radio and had become uh, a best-selling author and stuff, you actually worked as a nutritionist um, for a government agency. So, like, you're really credentialed. You're not, this isn't, you know, this isn't like the, the people in church that call themselves bishop but never went to seminary. <laughs> you're a real doctor. And so... You're coming from an educated place here, and I like that. And in your book, you know, last week I told the people I had cooked um, uh, your uh, the Asian style, style beef Asian with asparagus style. and yeah. green beans, and then I actually put the videos on my Insta stories and, and had them watch me go through the process. Oh. But in your book, you have healthy recipes, um, beef recipes. You have a, a great chicken recipe, yes. a warm steak salad, um, um, all types of different, you know, turkeys. Um, but know, but have food. Fish. I have real food, John. You have real food. Yeah. And as a nutritionist who helps people to lose weight, you helped me to get my weight down. Um, you and your husband run a practice in Alabama that deals with uh, people's weights and their health and things like that. Um, as somebody who's working to actually help people with their weight yeah. and their health and be on a track towards wellness and, and good nutrition, if you're advocating that people can eat all forms of food yeah. just in moderation, 
why why do you think there's this movie that's really pushing no 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 you should only eat sticks and twigs and things well <laughs> so so the agenda of um the outfit of the behind what the health is has always been about getting people to eat vegetables exclusively right um and so it's really a vegan agenda and that's one of the things that really um gets on my nerves about it one of the things that bothers me burns my beans if you will <laughs> um and that is let's not you know bring a film to the public and dress up like you really want to help people to live better lives when in fact you have a personal agenda you see what i mean you're sneaking things in you're doing this in an undercover way and you're not being above board nor are you giving accurate information and that's the biggest sin of all you can't talk to the public under the guise of wanting to help everybody when in fact you're giving them misinformation now Ro, we know years ago because you and i both watch tv and work in tv um during the days of the oprah winfrey show um she was sued by the beef organization because she had made a comment that they felt was anti-beef and because of her influence they felt that she would make people like the beef would like just go out of style, out of business. And yeah. so they sued her, which is how she ultimately met Dr. Phil because he worked on the case yeah. uh, as, a, as a consultant for her. I, I bring that up and I, I say that because is, is, is the, the same way there's an organization that pushes beef. Yeah. Uh, we see the commercials on TV that push pork. Does the vegan agenda have an organization that's now pushing it towards us? just like any other food group would. Well, Center for Science and the Public Interest, um, for which, to which Neil Barnard, who was featured in the film, is associated, um, does push the vegan agenda. What they get out of it, I, I can't tell you, but you know, nobody's in it if not for something to gain. If you have right. a personal agenda, um, then there's a reason for that. I can't tell you the specifics of what it is they get out of it, but they've been on this vegan train for a very long time. I've been doing this work for 28 years, and I can tell you that for a lot of that time, they have been pushing the vegan vegan agenda. They were doing this when I was in graduate school. Wow. And, so and they've now, made progress. And, and this has probably been their most effective tool because there are so many people who are now terrified of eating food based on the manipulations uh, and the contaminated image they're presenting of the non-vegetable-based food that they show in this documentary. Yeah, and let's listen. The, the real, the long and short of this is, um, again, vegetables and fruits should be the biggest part of your diet because the chemical compounds in the vegetables and fruit that give them their colors, right, the pigment of those fruits and vegetables really do sincerely go a long way to protect you from chronic diseases like type 2 diabetes, heart disease, hypertension, or high blood pressure, and even some forms, some forms of cancer. But that said, whenever somebody recommends to you that um, you should cut out a whole food group, okay, um, in order to go on a diet, you should look at that with a John desire. You need to be suspicious, all right? Now, the vegan agenda is you can be healthy and be vegan. But you don't have to be vegan to be healthy. Does that make sense? That's good. Dr. Dr. Rowe, I think you just got a t-shirt line. Now, can you say that one more time? That was good, Dr. Rowe. I'm claiming my time. I'm claiming my time. OK. Reclaiming your I'm time. Reclaiming Come on, get time. nutritionist. So yeah, you can be healthy and be vegan, but you don't have to be vegan to be healthy. That's good. And Dr. Rowe, I believe that because I was telling someone earlier who they were concerned about us having this chat tonight because they felt as though some of their friends who had not been on uh, the path towards wellness and nutrition um, would find out um, that, you know, there was an agenda and, and, and gross inaccuracies in what the health and, and it would make them go to the polar opposite side and, and start binging on unhealthy foods. And my, my posture was, um, those people weren't going to stay vegan anyway. This was just a, a visceral reaction yeah. to a movie. Um, you know, it's like when you watch a scary movie, you don't want to have all the lights off in your house. At okay. some point, you turn the lights off again. Yeah. Um, but um, I was saying to them that I've met uh, people who were morbidly obese that told me they were vegetarian. Yeah. Which means that too much of a good thing can still be a bad thing. Not, um, and it really speaks... Not only that, John, you can be vegetarian. So they talk about 
Um, they talk about meat causing diabetes. They talk about chicken causing diabetes and meat causing diabetes and um, in the film. And the fact is, if you eat um, a high carb diet, you know, because they talk about how fat doesn't turn to fat and sugar doesn't turn to fat. And that is, the, that is one of the other gross inaccuracies because it absolutely does turn to fat. Okay, and the thing is, if you eat a diet full of sugar and high simple carbs, carbs refined with refined sugars like white breads and all of those things made with white flour, all of those things made with simple sugars, meaning, you know, um, glucose, uh, sucrose, those things do actually turn into fat once they're metabolized by the body. So once they're processed, you, you, they're consumed and processed and broken down by the body, that becomes fat. So the point is, whether you're a vegan or a vegetarian, it doesn't mean that you're going to be slim. It has to do with the choices. And it has to do, listen, I used to be a nutritionist for um, an Adventist, an Adventist hospital in the D.C. area, in Tacoma Park, Washington Adventist, right, hospital. So uh -huh. they, they, Adventists eat vegetarian diets. But I never saw more cake and sauces and sugar on the tray, on the plate, and on the food line in all of my life. And the other thing is a lot of people who want to be vegetarian, uh, you know, they eat what's called meat analogs. So those are the things that are made with textured vegetable protein or they're made with soy protein or some other kind of plant protein, but they look and they're supposed to look, taste, and, and, and feel, have a mouthfeel um, like meat. My thing is why eat a vegan hot dog, a vegetable hot dog? If, you, if you're vegetarian, let's go with vegetables and fruit, plain and simple. You see what I mean? Let's go with vegetables right. and fruit, seeds, because that's what you do. You eat nuts, seeds. If you're a vegan, the diet is nuts, seeds, vegetables, fruits, and grains, okay? So why not do this? Why you got to dress it up and make it look like a hot dog or a hamburger? So that says to me that your mindset isn't there. You haven't really changed your mental um, understanding, if you will, of what this new diet means to your life. If it doesn't fit your life, then let's go with the diet that fits you. If you really like the taste of meat, let's go for it. That's good, Dr. Rowe. Now I got a couple, uh, another question for you. When I was doing my research today, I found this great article on Eater with some other medical professionals and scientists who are just as outraged as you are by what the hell and the misrepresentations in it. And um, Alexandra Freeman, the executive director of the Winton Center of risk and evidence communication uh, says the statistic about eggs in what the health are quote an extremely controversial paper i guess that's where they are pulling their research from mm -hmm. and while a, a, a cancer researcher named alice hawkworth remarks what the health overwhelms the viewer with scaremongering facts yes. that do not hold up to scientific investigation i know several people have asked me to ask you what are your thoughts on how they present the eggs and what the hell? Okay, so here's the thing. So there was a time back in the 70s <laughs> when um, <laughs> even the nutrition community was concerned about egg consumption and its ability to raise serum cholesterol levels. But the way eggs are produced now, see, we, he, they don't even talk about the fact that food isn't, you know, this isn't the food, same food supply that your mother or your grandmother grew up on, okay? This isn't... And mind you, most of our mothers and grandmothers ate uh, fat back hog maws and chitlins well, this and is, lived to be 102 years old. This is true. Though I'm not advocating fat back and chitlins. Though you're not advocating yeah. for it. <laughs> but, but it's true. My grandmother did too. So, but the thing is, so eggs are not what we thought they were like in the 80s and in the 70s. So, so the point is, they are healthier now. They have more vitamins, more minerals. Um, and they're better for you. And so they're not... You know, it's not that you have to limit your egg consumption, you know, to two a week anymore. Because, first of all, the, 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 the nutrition level of vitamins and minerals in eggs and protein found in the egg whites, which is where it is, the protein in the egg comes from the egg white. But, but those nutrients um, are so much greater now than they were before. And the cholesterol is really not an issue. This is good, Dr. Rowe. Now let me ask, ask you this. So one of the things I've been noticing on social media is that people who are now vegan because of what the hell are eating so many French fries. What do you think about all these French fry vegans? I'm on my flight towards healthiness because I've been scared straight because of what the hell 
but all I'm eating is French fries. What do you think about those folks, Dr. Well, Rose? French fries are made of potatoes. It's a vegetable. Okay, that's fine. But you have to look at the fat content in the French fries. You have to look at the sodium content in the French fries. If you really want to eat healthy as a vegan, you have to become creative. You got to get creative. Um, the other thing is for vegans, you know, there are some nutrients that you will have to supplement, like zinc, like calcium, like iron in many cases, um, and like B vitamins. Freeze up, Dr. Rowe. They are in animal sources. They're, they're, they're of greater value than those that are found in some of the plant sources. So um, you will have to supplement those, you know, your calcium, your iron, your zinc. Um, and, and uh, you know. And, and Dr. Rowe, I think, I think you got a little bit of like premonition of where I was going next. Because one of the things I was going to ask you was about how all of our DNA is, is made up differently. And sometimes okay. because of health reasons and, and, and just the way your body is, uh, is made up, you know, there's certain things that you need to function. And when you, when you decide to cut out certain food groups and, and certain parts of food groups uh, on a plight to healthiness without consulting a doctor or a nutritionist or someone like yourself, you could actually be doing yourself more harm than good, right? You could. You could. The, the bottom line is there really is no one-size-fit-all diet. You know, I've done what I consider to be a very well-rounded diet that covers a lot of ter territory for just about anybody, any other healthy person, and even people who are looking at facing diet, type 2 diabetes and heart disease in my book, Lose Your Final 15. But you, there, this book right here, Dr. Rowe? Shameless plug. This <laughs> wonderful book with this beautiful brown sister. Look at her and her green. Look at that smiling. She's smiling because she's saving lives with real health information yeah. and knowledge. Yeah, and I really do live to do this. So, um, but there is no one size fit all. And so what, what the health will have you believe, what they would like you to believe is that everyone should be on a vegan diet because that's best for everyone. And in fact, there is, the, the population is too varied, too big, too sprawling to project one program onto them, onto any of us. Well, well, Dr. Rowe, I'm going to ask you one more question, but while I'm setting up my question, if, there is, if there's anyone in the chat that has a question for Dr. Rowe, write your question in. I will give your question to her, and then uh, I'm going to set her free because Dr. Rowe's been up really early doing the news and stuff, and so I don't want to keep her too, too long. But um, Dr. Rowe, you know, they're, you know, summer is, you know, we're kind of in the middle of it. It's going to be going away soon. I'm always sad when it happens, and people are moving into the fall which is when, you know, everybody's summer body starts to go away. Mm -hmm. What's one thing that you would suggest to us that we do moving into the fall to continue to stay on the plight towards health um, and, you know, maintaining our summer ph physiques? Mm -hmm. I would say um, control your portions. That's really, really important. And that's something that everybody can do. Because even if you're eating French fries, eating a plate of French fries is not going to do it for you but eating a serving of french fries might. You see what I mean? So control Absolutely. your portions. And one of the easiest ways that you can do that is that if whatever you ate yesterday and all the days before, start eating half of that, half of the amount of the food that you've been eating. So leave food on your plate every meal, every meal and every snack if you can. Because what you do is you thoughtlessly um, cut calories. You know, you don't even have to think about it. This is a way to save 100 to 500 calories a day, depending on how many meals a day you eat. Wow. And then I would say, drink half your body weight in water. A lot of people kind of poo-poo this away and don't really understand how effective it can be and you maintaining your summer figures and your best figure all year round. But when you do, that water really does rev up your metabolism and you have to, you have to admit or concede that the more you take in, the more you have to flush out. Okay, so Dr. Rowe, uh, Shay Alice has a question. She wants to know, is almond milk uh, a better option than milk from the cow? Okay, so almond milk is only one, one gram of protein per serving, which is an eight-ounce cup, right? You get eight, at least eight okay. grams of protein from cow's milk. Um, the other thing is you don't get the calcium unless your almond milk is fortified with calcium. So for me... Almond milk is a good alternative if you can't, if you're um, lactose intolerant, if you cannot tolerate, uh, um, or, um, you know, 
you want to just use it for flavoring. It's a great flavor. It's a great way to say, oh, I didn't have the cow's milk, but I did have some milk in my coffee, or I did have some milk in my latte, um, or in my smoothie, um, that sort of thing. I use almond milk with frozen bananas to make what I call banana ice cream for a snack, which is only, a, it's under 150 calories versus over 280 calories for a serving is of ice cream. Is that recipe in the final 15, Dr. Rowe? Yes, it is. <laughs> is that recipe also in the final 15? Okay, yes. this is, I want to plug your book because I'm so grateful that you said it with us tonight. Um, what are the other, uh, uh, and, and you mentioned uh, if, if you're lactose intolerant, but they also have um, uh, the lactate milk, which you know that I'm on because I got off of mm -hmm. uh, the other milk because, you know, if I had it, it would run me and I got tired yeah. of running. So <laughs> literally, there's uh, <laughs> Stephanie, <laughs> Stephanie Tucker said her husband has high cholesterol and can't seem to get it down enough for his doctor. He has cut back on eggs avocado, et cetera, but it's still high. Do you, is there anything else in the food group thing that he could cut out to maybe help along the journey? Well, see, for him, the cholesterol, the, um, his meat, he wants to make sure that his meat is lean. He should probably stick more with chicken and fish and go with red meat occasionally. But when he does, and by occasionally, I mean no more than eight ounces a week, so two four-ounce servings. So that could be two days a week. Um, the other thing, because red meat is substantially high in saturated fat. And um, so it's not the cholesterol, it's the saturated fat that raises dietary cholesterol levels. So he should cut that. Uh, don't cut avocados. Avocados are a good fat that protect his heart. Um, the other thing for his cholesterol, it's not about cutting out. I'm going to give him something to add. Two things that will reduce his cholesterol levels, oats. If he eats oatmeal every day, he will probably see a drop in his cholesterol level because oats and beans, like I did a recipe this morning on Good Day DC on Fox Morning News, um, making a breakfast bowl, and I have the, the recipes for doing a, a black bean veggie breakfast bowl and all kinds of breakfast bowl, yes, right in that book. So if he eats more beans, which are very... Oh, it looks like we lock, lost Dr. Rowe. All right, so Dr. Rose Wi-Fi cut out. I'm going to wait for her to come back in and join us. But hopefully you guys have really enjoyed the information and